I'm going to play 23 questions. It's the Michael Jordan version of 21 questions, okay? And this is all revolving around Intro, which is my new mixtape that drops May 5th. And if you've pre-ordered already, thank you. So, I got all the questions here. You know. So I'm going to be constantly looking down at my phone. <laughs> I'm releasing Intro for my fans and everybody that was rooting me on to continue making music and just kind of put that love of music back inside of me. So that's who I'm making it for, and that's why I'm making it. I picked It's Okay as the first single pretty much when I first had wrote the first part of the song. Because I heard the beat, and uh, I was just listening to it, and like the first thing that I thought of was just, let me take it to another place, somewhere you ain't been before. And I kind of like how that sounded, so, and I kept going with it. And then by the time I was done, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna use this as a single. Because it's, it's not the best song on the mixtape. Like I, I said in a post, it's like the it's probably like the middle of the pack as far as the best songs. But it's the it's the easiest accessible song, you know what I mean? So I wanted that to be the first one. Um, I shot the music video for It's Okay. I don't know if you've seen the blooper reel. But uh, <laughs> it was my, let me see, I think it's my second one that I did myself. On my first album, the, the music video for Secrets, that was like my first... Um, dabbling into making my own music videos because you know working with different directors and videographers over the years you learn things from them and I'm like a big old sponge so when I'm around, whenever I'm around people I kind of like they might not know I'm paying attention but I like really pay close attention to what people are doing and that kind of was like my training to learn how to shoot so shooting myself is a little more difficult because you got to get yourself in focus um, you know you, you got to find ways to get camera movement without because like it's hard to move the camera you know a lot of people don't know how to do it you know you can you can have somebody help you out and then they won't really do it the right way the way I want it to be done so it is a little difficult but it was fun I think it came out pretty good considering I shot it myself you know <laughs> funny thing is people really don't give a crap about those types of things you know what I mean? like they don't care they don't recognize the degree of difficulty they just like hey, I don't like the video but whatever I think the hardest part about making intro is because you know I'm very self-sufficient and I'm independent I do a lot of stuff myself and that's hard you know um, you know shooting your own music videos writing all the songs mixing all the songs you know finding the tracks from different producers um, you know I send it off to be mastered um, Jeff Star masters um, my songs but it's just hard doing it all by yourself, you know, photo shoots, a lot of like, you'll see pictures of me and like, I took those pictures, you know. I'm doing this interview right now, <laughs> you know, I'm controlling the camera because I'm just good at that type of stuff, but it, it's hard, you know. Duality was supposed to be the last thing I ever did and I was very sincere about that. I was going to sell my microphone and not sell it like because I needed some quick money, but I was just going to sell it just to get rid of it. Like I was like, I don't even want to be around it. Because I, I just was done, you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Like, you do things long enough, you get tired of them for a little bit, you know? Like, had a little break, you know? But I came back, thanks to you guys, you know, um, encouraging me. But I'm back. And I'm loving making music. And Intra is what's coming. By the way, Intra stands for Introverbal Music Theory. And I put that out there, I don't know who remembers, but I put Introverbal Music Theory out there first, when I first announced the title. And I shortened it to Intro because Introverbal Music Theory is, like, that just sounds like me. Like, I overcomplicate things. <laughs> my wife was like, oh my god, that sounds like you. So I was like, let me just shorten it to Intro. So it's a little more, you know, you can eat it a little more easy. <laughs> but Introverbal, it's like a form of communication that's like, it's like the most intricate form of communication, you know, it's like, it's like when you, you call for a response without asking that direct, you know, asking for that direct response. It's like, a, it's like second nature type of communication. Most people do it, you know, regularly, but some people are born and they just, they don't really, they're not really able to communicate on an introvertal level. So like, like if I say one plus one, somebody just shouts out two. You know, that's like introverbal communication. I never actually ask them what is one plus one. They just, like, well, as soon as you hear one plus one, you know that that's two. It's 
that's kind of what I was getting at, you know. And it's like music does that. Music will, music will give you an answer to something without even asking you and asking to generate that answer from because there's no question. It's kind of <laughs> I don't even think that made sense. But if you get it, you get it. You know what I mean? Like music, introverbal music is like music that generates a response without asking a question generates an answer without asking a question. I'll give an example. Um, Just a Man from my first album, Sophisticated. When I first heard that track, um, it's funny, I made that song because the dude that was trying to get me to sign with Top Notch Music was like, yo, you need to make just like one more song because he wants to know, like, he wants to see if you, if you got more than just, you know, Sophisticated Lady, because I already had recorded Sophisticated Lady. You know, before I was even, you know, before anybody knew me. And he's like, he just wants to hear one more, you know, just to be sure. So I, I went in and recorded Just a Man. And I heard the beat, and it was like, you know, ding, 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 ding. If you know the song, you know how that piano run goes. And I just pressed record, and I was like, All I got is $85 in this bank account. Baby, is that enough for you to stay? And it just came out like that, and it was freestyle. And that whole verse, I just spit it out, and you know, I might have stumbled over some words or whatever, because you know, your brain's just like going all at one time. But um, that's mostly the concept to start the writing, and then once I iron it out, I start mixing, you know, the compression, the EQ, the reverb, um, delays, all that, um, and then I send it off to Jeff Star, like I said before, he masters it and takes it from sounding like cool to like bam, like right in your face, like big, you can turn the volume up and it still sound good. Uh, give it that radio sound. Um, yes and no. Uh, I mean, obviously, I don't have millions of fans and I'm not in this big old penthouse in LA or New York, so. But at the same time, you know, I've accomplished more than a great deal of artists, you know. Not too many people that I know of can say that, you know, they've been on billboard charts or performed with the likes of R&B's greatest, you know, stars and been on the biggest stages around the country, you know, so uh, I'm very grateful for what I do have and what I've accomplished. Uh, <laughs> the reason why I'm not a household name is because it's, it's, a, it's a complicated reason because I think being a father, a, you know, a single father, you have certain responsibilities that go deeper than pursuing your dreams. And for example, if I was single with no kids and went through the same things that I went through, I could have easily just kept, you know, doing what I was doing. I could have kept staying out with, you know, and performing more and I could have just lived on people's couches. It wouldn't have, I don't care, you know what I mean? I, it would all just been for the dream. But you can't be living on no couches with a kid, you know what I mean? Like, that kid has to grow up. And you can't say, well, damn, I didn't make it. It's too bad. But now my son lives this crappy life because I was sitting there trying to make it. Um, so... I think the reason I'm not a household name has a lot to do with just me taking responsibility over the life that I was living and, and giving, you know. Because a lot of people, they like, they'll see their kids as like these little speed bumps on the on the road to their success. But like, once you have kids, the kids become the, the, what your life is actually about. So I kind of walked away from a lot of stuff so that I could make sure that his life was better. It's pretty simple, you know. Have you ever made a cheeseburger that tastes like McDonald's? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't. The reason you can't is because McDonald's don't make cheeseburgers. They make things with chemicals in them, and they put these flavors with, like, a little injector. Like, they have scientists that develop these flavors, and it's all processed. That's the music that you hear. That's the popular music is, you know, for the most part, is just all processed music. And my music is organic, so it's going to sound a little different. You ever make some organic food or... You go to one of those mom and pop restaurants and the food's good. It tastes slightly different, right? You know, so my music sounds slightly different. You know, one of the main things I've learned from music is that everything isn't what it seems. Uh, I know there's so many debates about how the music business operates and I'm not going to go too much into detail, but the main thing I learned was things are not the way you think they are. You know, 
everything is kind of a show and there's nothing wrong with that uh, you know it's all entertainment so my goal for Andrew is for you to listen to it enjoy it and play it more than once uh, play it at different functions play it while you're cleaning up play it while you're in bed play it while you're doing homework you know what I mean um, music isn't always about sit there and stare at it like a piece of art on the wall you know what I mean like there's a difference between some artists make music and it's just the greatest most abstract beautiful piece of art and you stare at it and you're like oh man this is so cool but you don't really listen to it because it's it's not practical in your life my music is practical you can apply it to different things different parts of your life you know so you don't have to just sit there and listen to every lyric you can just enjoy the vibes and get what I'm trying to say in an introvertible way so <laughs> see what I did there if I could change one thing about myself, I would wish to be a little bit more social. You know, there's a few people in my family that are social butterflies. I'm not. I'm the introvert of all introverts. <laughs> Whenever you read those little Facebook posts and they're like 10 things you need to know about introverts, all of them are me. Like <laughs> and anybody that knows me will tell you like that's true. You know, I'm very unassuming. You know, most people just... I, if you just saw me in public, and you would just think that I have no life, and I don't have any talents, I don't do anything, I just play video games, but <laughs> that's just because I don't, like, I don't just put things in your face, I won't walk up to you like, hey, I do this, I do that, I mean, you'll see me do it if you get to know me, but I won't put it out there to you like that, but I do wish I was a little bit more social, like, more of a salesperson, like, that sales mentality, that probably would be, that's another probably reason why I'm not household names, because I don't like brag and put stuff in your face a whole lot, like when I'm, you know, physically around you. I absolutely love all of my fans, anybody that ever played one song or showed somebody something, you know, I really, and I, I, I feel like my fans are the people that get me, you know, not just play my music, but they understand who I am, my shortcomings, my strengths, so I really appreciate you guys, and you know, I, I thank you for your steadfast um, support, so thank you. <laughs> I don't give a shit, like, if, I, if you don't like me, if, if I don't impress you, first of all, nobody asked you, <laughs> but if, I, if you're not impressed by my music or by me, or you just like, you know, the type of person, like, I don't like him, so I don't like his music, or I don't like his vibe, that's you, you know. Go somewhere else, okay? Stay off of my page. Um, yeah, I know some people have given up on me, uh, especially from kind of walking away from, from the whole label thing. Uh, but it, like, those people were never really there for me anyway, you know. As a, as a new artist, when you're brand new and they're like playing you on the radio and you're like, you know, getting spins across the country, people start gravitating towards you just in case you become something greater, you know. That's the only reason. They don't want to get to know you on a personal level. They just want to stay near you just in case you blow up for real. And as soon as it feels like, oh, yeah, he, that's, that's probably not going to happen, they walk away, and that's fine. So those people, you know, whatever. And and, and they're good people. Uh, you know, I know people where I remember the first time I met them, and it was just all love, and then, you know, you ask them for a favor later on down the road, and they're just like, eh, they don't really want to help you out. So it's, it's all good. It's no big deal. But I will say that this always happens to me <laughs> my whole life. Um, because I'm so unassuming and I do things my own way, a lot of people give up on me right before they probably should have thought twice. You know what I mean? Like before I even got signed and was on the radio, people had gave, given up on me, you know, locally. Not like... You know, it wasn't a big deal, you know, but they just, in their head, were just like, you know, why are you making music? This is going nowhere. And then the next year, I'm on the radio, and they're like, oh, my God, I love you. I can't believe you're on the radio. And I'm like, you know, last year, you weren't saying that. So the people that give up on me lately, you know, you never know. Next year, they're going to be like, oh, shit, maybe I shouldn't have gave up on you. But by then, it's too late. <laughs> I hate the people that give up on something and then want to jump back on board when it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> I love the people that stick around and just hold down the fort and see it all the way through. How about that? Uh, I don't listen to a whole lot of R&B. I do try to keep up with what's new. Um, I mean, you know, it's funny. 
when I wrote Sophisticated Lady, the reason I wrote that song was because I had listened to Miguel's um, album or mixtape, All I Want Is You, and I listened to it, and he inspired me to make some good-ass R&B music. I don't, let me tell you. I can't remember an R&B artist lately that's inspired me that much to make some good music. I think it would be Just A Man, because Just A Man, you know, I really wrote that song from the bottom of my heart about just being like a normal guy and, you know, not necessarily being able to compete with some of the people out there and just you know you gotta appreciate me for me and if you do you know I'll take you long far off places I think uh, what brings me peace is is making a good song you know I think as a writer you know you spend a lot of time just trying to make that perfect song you don't always make the perfect song but when you make a brand new song like that first few times listen to a brand new song it, it feels so good you know I've probably listened to intro you know thousands of times and like now it's like I can't even hear it no more but when I first heard each song it's like you fall in love with each one it's like a child being born I'll tell you about my wife my wife her name is Kim some people call her Kimmy I like to call her Kim I like Kim I think Kim's a sexy name and uh, she's she's one of, she's the most positive loyal and loving people I've ever met in my whole life and she's great She's amazing. She's held me down. You know, I met her when, I remember the first time she met me, you know, and I had one of the more, <laughs> not the most respectable living circumstances that she kind of just like didn't care, you know. She just looked over all that. And we're good now, you know, and we look, we laugh all the time. We look back at like, you know, where we started, you know, like from a life standpoint. And it's, you know, she really just, Look, overlooked a lot of the, my shortcomings and, and just loved me for me so uh, I'll tell you more about my wife um, Let me. I'll tell you how we met it's 2012 I had just come back from Los Angeles doing some performances and my song was on the radio so like people around town are like this is that moment where like a lot of people that had kind of like given up on me were like oh shit like John's on the radio uh, so you know my name is starting to bubble a little bit and I have a band and my band's drummer is my wife's brother. I didn't know this at the time. So anyway, my band is playing the Green Turtle at the mall. And when I got back from LA, I had a show at Cue Balls, which is across the street from the mall. So I told the band, you know, I won't be able to make your show because I'm gonna be over here while you're over here. I get to my show, hanging out, had a couple drinks. Power goes out in the city, or at least in the shopping center. And there's no storm. There's no nothing. The power just goes out. For whatever reason. I always feel like God cut that power off. Because <laughs> I left cue ball because the power was out and they were like, the show's over. So I went over to Green Turtle where my band is at because they're still there. I'm like, let me just go hang out with them, you know. I ain't got nothing to do. Uh, I walk in, everybody's like, eh, you know, John's here. And um, the power cuts back on. Reggie, who's the the band leader, was like, yo, let's do Sophisticated Ladies. He started cranking it up. And we always did Sexy Ladies, like the Go-Go song before. So we, like, I would sing Sexy Ladies and then the Go-Go. And then we do the Go-Go version of Sophisticated Lady. And uh, I did it. And I performed it. And I'm like singing. And I see somebody in the front. And sexy, you know, Sophisticated Lady just so happened to be Kim, who's my wife. And I'm singing to her. And after we get done, I'm like, hey, you know, I want to get to know you. Kind of slid her my, my number and everything, and the rest is history. But, you know, that's it's crazy that, you know, she ended up being my wife. I swear, I, I think God did that. <laughs> I think he did. People should buy insurance because it is good, wholesome. <laughs> now, it is good, organic, beautiful R&B music. And it covers real topics, you know. It, it, it's it, like I got a song on there called um, "I Still Love You," and like that's like some of the realest stuff I wrote. And it's about saving a marriage, and like being like not like observing a marriage that needs saving, like saving my marriage. You know what I mean? And it's talking about some real stuff, and you know it's a song that might be used by a couple to save their marriage. You know, you listen to it, you might start crying. I don't know, uh, you know. And then there's songs like nobody. And nobody is like an intricate, like, kind of like, it's that newer age where, like, 
men aren't always in control anymore and this dude is just like nobody has control of me but at the same time he's realizing that this woman has control of him and um you know it's okay which is you know just about loving somebody and being in a relationship when money isn't really there yet and just enjoying the simple things um and then culmination which i love culmination it's funny like when i played i remember playing my brother some tracks from intro before i i just got started I only had like three or four songs done and he was like listening he was like oh these are cool and then i played culmination he's like yo this is the one like this is like a hit and like when you hear it you're like yeah this is like you can dance to it and you know culmination i, I was kind of like envisioning like barack and michelle obama you know they they like had sacrificed their lives to be these public figures and you know be president first lady and now they've reached their goals and now they're just enjoying life and that's kind of what the inspiration was for that one but there's so many good songs on here that you can listen to and enjoy and i can't wait for may 5th to get here so you can check it out and please keep it in your library djs keep spinning it and um just keep the music going and uh, i'll try to i'll try to follow up after this we'll see